points with the two parties concerned, and uh, those agreements are now ready for completion to allow the studies to commence immediately. The first one, the future proofing of Junction 23 of the M6, is a request from St. Helens for £247,500, and this will look at capacity around Junction 23 of the M6 and its interchange with the A580, a key corridor for business growth uh, for the city region. And uh, obviously, if you can make sure that that's fit, uh, it's moving forward and aligns with the proposed smart motorway upgrade between Junctions 21A and 26 of the M6, along with the corridor improvements itself to the A580, it will close in a good place. The second request is from the, the LEP for £100,000 to develop the internationalisation strategy. Uh, I don't think I need to say anything more about the internationalisation strategy given the conversation we've just had. Um, both projects have been independently appraised, they met all of the core eligibility criteria and have scored in excess of the prioritisation <coughs> threshold for them to be considered. Uh, the recommendations are at 2.1 and on the screen in front of you. Thank you. Can we agree the recommendations are page? Five, please. Agreed. And we're moving on to uh, item 11, which is a portfolio update. Councillor Davis is going to take us to a, a presentation which sets up the work achieved within his portfolio, which is economic development and culture. Okay, thanks, um, thanks Steve. Um, I'm conscious that we've had lots of presentations today, so it's uh, my death by PowerPoint, so I'm just going to answer to, to, to this. So I'll be very I'll be very brief. So I'm just going to talk about the key priorities in, in the portfolio I lead. Um, tell you a little, bit about, a little bit about the work we've been doing, more importantly, kind of future actions. In terms of the uh, main responsibilities of the portfolio, it's uh, on the screen there. It's about promoting growth through the key growth sectors, um, maximising investment by working with developers and investors, um, focusing on the strategic sites and, and infrastructure within the city region, um, supporting economic growth through the single investment fund we've just been talking about, and then looking at the, the industrial strategy for the, the city region, and then finally developing a world-class cultural offer. And the thing I think, Steve, that you've just touched on, which I think is is important to note, is, is how there's an overlap with my portfolio, with almost every other portfolio. You know, you can't talk about infrastructure without talking about transport. You can't talk about um, the key economic sectors without talking about the skills. So I think that's an important you know, point to make. So, if I just briefly look at each of the um, priorities. Key growth sectors, we're, we're doing a review at the moment of what those key growth sectors should be. Within the existing um, growth plan, we've got seven uh, sectors, which feels probably quite long and, and, and quite broad. So we're looking at, can we be a bit more kind of focused on what the, the, the absolutely critical ones are? Um, and then within them, Within those key growth sectors, are asking questions about what are the key priorities for those <coughs> businesses, those companies, um, and, and, and obviously that's where we, we've just had the debate about skills and training. Uh, but, you know, there'll be other things as well. So we need to get under the skin of, of some of those issues, and then look at how we can kind of what can the not just the CA but us working collectively uh, as a city region, all the, the agencies we've been talking about today. What interventions can we make to make a difference um, to help those those key sectors uh, thrive and flourish and go forward? And then thirdly, again about the CA about bringing funding streams together. So it's not just about the SIF; it's about how we can add value by bringing all the multiplicity <coughs> of funding that we now have um, to uh, uh, at our disposal, local growth funding and so on. How can we bring all that together in one pot? And that takes me on to investment. So investment is obviously critical because without investment we can't do very much. So we need a coherent investment strategy for the city region with a delivery plan with measurable kind of outcomes. We need to be clear what our you know, unique selling proposition is in the city region, what will be most uh, competitive and how, how can we add value to attract that investment. Um, 
to, to political to the region and not go elsewhere. Uh, thirdly, uh, what resources and what structures do we need <coughs> to deliver um, to attract that investment? And I think that's about working smarter. It's about making sure that we've got um, one united offer, bringing all the, the key agencies together. So rather than companies having to go to 10, 11, 12 separate places, they go to one place and get good, high quality service. Um, and I call that a one stop shop model. Um, we do need to fully engage with, with all the key players. Um, <coughs> this is a few of them there. But you know, business organisations, particularly Frank McKenna's organisation, is the key, key one we need to <laughs> engage with. And, um, uh, you know, and again, this overlaps with the Basit and its um, portfolio around business. Uh, and then finally, and I just mentioned it, maximise it. In the, in the interim, we can't stand still. We need to maximise opportunities for investment um, while we're putting together our strategic strategy. Uh, sites and infrastructure. Um, I think the key immediate challenge is to make sure we spend the SIF money and we spend it wisely. I've listed a few on the slide of the, the key um, uh, strategic sites and schemes which uh, have received SIF funding or are currently being appraised. Um, the SIF money was a key uh, achievement, I think, from the devolution deal. We need to, need to make sure we, we spend it wisely, and as I say, bring it together with, with the other multiplicity of funding opportunities that are now available to us. In terms of future actions, we clearly need to make sure that we maximise the opportunities in our two <coughs> enterprise zones, Mersey Waters and Thursbury. Uh, we need to be looking now, and then we are, at the options for the Metro Med Development Zones, which again was one of the elements of the devolution deal. We need to look at the, what are the next big infrastructure opportunities in the local city region. Steve, we talked about tidal barrages and fiber loops and, and, and the like, and we really do need to, as I know we are, um, make, make significant progress with them. Yeah. And then, as I said uh, earlier, we need to develop a single strategic funding model to bring all of these um, funding pots together in one place. Uh, single investment fund, we, we've talked about that. I won't really kind of go over, go over what we talked about. We've got 48 projects which have been approved at the strategic outline um, case, all of which are in different uh, parts of the appraisal process. Some uh, 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 have four business cases agreed and going forward, other uh, 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 still outline business cases. But the key thing is we need to make sure that we, we spend the money uh, and, and we spend wisely. But we're also now looking at future SIF rounds. And, I've, and we had a discussion earlier on, I think it is the way forward, about having a more strategic themed approach, a more commissioning rather than um, an open call that really focuses on the key things that we want to see achieved um, within the, the city region. Uh, and then uh, finally, the, the local city region industrial strategy. Clearly, the government have earlier this year launched their um, national industrial strategy. We need to play into that to make sure that we get the best uh, opportunities for the city region. We need to build on the science and innovation audit, uh, which is a really good piece of work that was done recently. And we need to really focus on the kind of um, uh, what we call the place-based approach so that we focus on our strengths, um, our opportunities, and what is our kind of USP going forward. So those are the main uh, uh, ideas for uh, future work within the economic development portfolio. And I will talk very briefly about culture because I haven't really got much time, but this is the other part of my portfolio. Clearly, uh, again, um, uh, an area where we've got significant opportunities in terms of uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, importance of culture to the, the city region, the visitor economy particularly. We need to be, I think, very uh, adept at bidding for um, regional and national funding opportunities that are coming down the, the line and we're looking at a number of them at the moment. Relationships with, with our key partners uh, is, is obviously important. We need to have a really high quality events program that brings you know, significant numbers of, of visitors to the uh, city region economy and we're, we're working on that at the moment. 
we need to really focus on our creative industry and cultural sector. Um, it, it, is a, it is a really important economic sector, often underestimated and, and undervalued, but I think there are huge opportunities for growth um, around those industries. And I talk about film, digital, technology industries. And that's, again, where it crosses over with the skills portfolio, because there are opportunities there and skills and apprenticeships. But most particularly, engaging our communities in the cultural agenda. I think there are great opportunities for having, um, showcasing the best of each of the borough's uh, cultural offers um, over the next few years. So what are we doing at the moment? Um, I've been working quite closely as other colleagues um, with Phil Redmond, who's doing a, a, a big piece of work around a, a cultural partnership report, which is due out in the summer of next year, which is a 30-year plan for culture within the city region. We we'll obviously need to join up with, with what Phil's doing. Uh, I mentioned the importance of, a, of an events program, and I've listed a few, few there for next year, which I think are really exciting. Um, we have got opportunities around uh, applying for funding and being part of, of, of larger uh, national initiatives. So there's a great exhibition of the North next year uh, being held in Newcastle Gateshead, uh, which showcases the best of art and design and innovation. We need to be uh, showcasing the best of what we can offer in the city region. There's a pot of money called the Northern Cultural Regeneration Fund. It's only 15 million, but uh, it's about building a regional legacy from that great exhibition for the North. We need to be uh, stepping up to the plate and putting forward uh, bits to take advantage of that funding. And then finally, we're all going behind, obviously, the um, uh, bid for the Channel 4 headquarters to be uh, located to uh, Liverpool. Okay, so finally, uh, Steve, in terms of future actions for the portfolio, on economic development, um, I think we want to develop this single strategic funding model, still at the key priorities I've mentioned. Um, we want to look at uh, developing a, a coherent and strategic investment uh, international strategy and, and more importantly, delivery plan, and look at the <coughs> priorities for increasing, increasing growth and productivity productivity in our key growth sectors. And then finally, in culture, um, I talked about the cultural strategy framework that we're working with, with Phil Redmond on. That will be available for consultation prior to being finalised next year. And then the major events programme for 2018 is something uh, immediately that I think we can uh, all benefit from and, and leave a lasting legacy, hopefully, for the city region. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Any questions for Phil? Um, I've got two quick ones, Phil, which is um, that, well, well, just in response, I hope it's to announce a crowd temperature for the amazing time, but I'm telling you, but it's just a oh, good <laughs> um, I hope to announce a cheer for the amazing time, barrier, barrage, whatever it's going to be called, in the uh, next few weeks, and, and that people will really push on that piece of work. It's more deliverable now than it ever has been since 1982, when the first report came out from it. Barrier when I was six, um, and if you look towards the um, the program that you've outlined for the 10th anniversary Captain Culture the 18th and 18th of the next year, um, the combined authority also has a big say in that because we uh, collectively funded £500 to go into that program. Uh, the most exciting bit for me personally is the 10 cost of audience, and that would be a huge attraction and draw people in from all around the country. Okay, we need to capitalise on that. Get them into the bus, as you said, and yes, of course, we all have attractions outside, so that's part of an old, old that we've got to see that we can get people going out into the districts that they can say that's something for them when they get there, so we can see. Uh, can we note the, the presentation of the film? Thank you very much for that. Of course, yeah. A little bit for the person clarity. Can we just check that date of birth, please? <laughs> 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 okay, 12 is um, we're going to have a, an update on spatial planning, environment, and air quality, a very important uh, issue. Uh, the, um, it was confirmed in the last week that you remember, so Mike Payland is going to take us through this particular presentation. 
Thank you, Chair. Uh, obviously, I'm speaking on behalf of um, Councillor Grumwald as this is his portfolio and providing uh, quick updates. The focus really here is on the strategic spatial framework that we committed to when we committed to the devolution deal. Um, so that framework is a significant piece of work. It's not simple to complete, it will be quite complicated. Um, anyone who is aware of the process in Greater Manchester will know it's not been simple for them either. But we're well progressed in the work we need to do here in the local city region. We will set our collective planning priorities for upcoming years. It will allow us to work together to achieve them and importantly to manage any conflict between different authorities in that process. It will help us give Mark more confidence uh, to achieve economic growth but also to plan better. So from an environmental and sustainability point of view, it will allow us for, to plan better for incidents of flooding, of which has been some in the city region over recent years, but also to make sure we've got the right transport and energy infrastructure in place. And just in terms of governance, uh, Gideon Ben Tobin, as a mayoral advisor and chair of Nature Connected, will be joining the, the board going forward. It's a strategic spatial framework uh, required by the devolution agreement. So the key point here is that it does not replace the local plan processes. So Nosley and Sefton's local plans that have been recently adopted, they have privacy, uh, as will the St. Helens and Liverpool plans that are currently in production and any other plans produced by individual authorities. They have primacy, this is a strategic plan that, that will sit above those. In terms of the, the process, as I say, it's a complicated process, but we've done a number of key elements <coughs> already. So the strategic overview stage has been completed. The statements of cooperation on planning, which is an agreement between all authorities to work together, that has been completed. And yesterday the Metro Mayor was on a call with the Government Minister who stated there would be a need for all local authorities to have these plans in the future. Well, we've done that, we've already got that in place. And then we're underway in producing a standard evidence base. So we're required to produce that by 2018. We're well underway in undertaking that piece of work. So although it's complicated, a lot of work has been done and will well progress. The final slide, just to touch on an issue that a number of members have raised with me on, on a number of occasions. The devolution deal requires us to have a brownfield register in place by 2018. It is also a requirement for all individual local authorities. We are producing uh, a brownfield list, so this is from within our existing planning frameworks, and that will be available before the back end of this year. So as a number of members have raised with me, our priority needs to be brownfield first, and we will have the list of brownfield sites before the end of the year. And then, in line with the devolution agreement, we'll have the brownfield register by 2018. A key point in the register there is that if it's on that list, you have to presume development. So it can only be sites that are deliverable that will end up on the list. It is not every brownfield site throughout the city region. And of course, the owner of the site has to put it forward to be included for development. So that work as well, the prioritisation of brownfield sites, is also on the way. I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions? Um, just to, to thank you, you might, it's unusual, isn't it, for really really thanking an officer um, for the work of a leader, and it's normally the opposite way around. We would always thank the leaders for the work that's being completed by the officers. So thanks very much for that. Um, can we note that presentation? We're going on to item 13, which is the Intellectual Enterprise Partnership for being allocated funding by the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy to develop a Liverpool City Region and the Stat Strategy and the report seeks approval by the authorities to act as an accountable body for this government funding. Um, I think it's just really to note this particular report. Um, Councillor Davis, have you got anything? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, are we agreed then that we agree with recommendations on page 59? Done 14, so we're on to 15, which is the Armed Forces Covenant. And obviously, uh, I think everybody here understands that our Armed Forces put their lives on the line for our country every day. And it's right that we honour that commitment and sacrifice. So we've enshrined that today uh, as we reinforce our commitment uh, to the Armed Forces of the Armed Forces Community Covenant. So to this end, uh, I'll be appointing a mayor champion for the Armed Forces and we'll produce an annual report on the progress in regards to the Armed Forces Covenant 
Uh, can you agree the recommendations on page 209, please? Uh, item 16 is a uh, uh, report that sets out the monitoring and evaluation plan that's been developed and will be submitted to the government to assess the impact of the delivery of the devolution deal across the city region at survey and also this week we do this report. President, to nominate a deputy in your place has been established by Mayor Jo Anderson. And in Manchester, Mayor Andy Burnham has insisted his cabinet is 50% women and reflects the region's diversity. We wrote to Mayor Steve Rotherman on the 3rd of August to, that request, to, to request that he modernise the Constitution when he has the opportunity to do so in January 2018. <coughs> and take an inclusive approach to committee membership, one that truly reflects the city region and its diversity. Another request was to develop open recruitment processes for LCR committees that would role model leadership behavior that can be used as an example to other organizations and sectors. <coughs> we have received both local and increasingly national press for our request to these council leaders. This is written, represented by myself, but written on behalf of a number of 
sectors, female representatives of a very diverse set of women across the Liverpool City region. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Um, I think you've probably been notified by um, the staff here that you will receive a <coughs>